everyone and welcome to the Oakler's YouTube channel. In today's tutorial we're going to be doing a little bit of English paper piecing. You guys know how much I love to do that. English paper piecing is a way of hand sewing small pieces of fabric together that have very intricate shapes. It also uses paper or some sort of a stabilizer. We'll talk about that more today. But I specifically wanted to go over a new-ish set of templates that we have on shopoaklers.com which is the set of three box top style templates. Um, we call it box top because I specifically kind of came up with these to use for a certain pattern and I'm going to show you in just a moment. So this set of three includes a hexagon, it includes a diamond, and it includes a small triangle. Now, if you buy a set of three, they will all be the same color. I just don't have a set of the same color. Also, when you purchase these on Shop Okaroos, you will see that there are different seam allowance sizes and we'll zoom in on these in a little bit and I'll show you that. But some of the sets have a quarter inch seam allowance, which is great if you're going to be making big, big, big panels and quilts and things like that. And some of them have a 3 8 inch seam allowance. The 3 8 inch seam allowance is perfect if you're going to be using this on bags. For example, it's going to be along a zipper or you're going to be piecing it together with other big pieces in a bag because we do tend to use a bigger seam allowance with bags. Both work totally fine. I actually have two quarter inch here and a 3 8 inch here and I use them all together because again, that's what I have. Uh, so it's not a big deal. It's just when you go to purchase them, you do have those options for those seam allowance sizes. Something really special about these templates as well, which we will go into big detail with, is that they have these little holes marked out at their corners. And I'm going to show you how we use those. I'm going to show you how helpful those are, especially if you decide that you want to use stabilizer for your templates instead of paper. You'll see the method to my madness in a moment. But I wanted to show you, this is the classic boxy bag and this template set is available on Shop Oak Roots. There is also a tutorial for this with the free measurements if you don't want to use a template set. But if you can see, I actually used the hexagon and the triangles to create this beautiful design along the top. And so that's kind of what I was thinking of when I was putting these template sets together. However, you can piece these pieces together in any way you like to create all kinds of designs. For example, we will cut this out later to create another box top, but you see I used the three different shapes and I created this beautiful, very modern kind of webby look. And when we cut this down to make it into a box top, it's going to have a totally different look, which I'm very excited to see happen. So we'll cut this down later. But if you did like this very, you know, clean look, but you also wanted to use the diamond, I wanted to show you, I made another set here and I'm going to take the papers out of this during the tutorial and show you how to apply the woven interfacing and what to do with the edges and everything like that. But this is just one that I've already completed. And you can see I use some diamond sets of three instead of the hexagon to create these very similar design as this. So you have a lot of wiggle room. I will have a few options available on the site, kind of like inspiration, but part of the fun of this is just designing it out yourself. This set does go very well with any of our acrylic templates because as you lay out everything on your cutting mat, you can also just overlay the acrylic template for whatever, the snack bag, for the boxy bag, for a spice rag, anything you're using, you can just put the template over that and then you can get your design figured out, take a picture and then hand sew it together, which again, we're going to talk about all that. So first what we're going to do is we're going to go through the website. I'm going to show you how to purchase the acrylic templates if you're interested in those. I'm also going to show you where to find the paper piece file. This is a downloadable file that you will print onto cardstock paper. I will have links for what I use down below for everything. Many of the items you'll see we use for English paper piecing are sold in Shop Oak Roots, so if I have a link for those, I will provide them. I'm also going to show you how to download the English paper piecing paper file and how to print that out. And then we'll go through how to cut that out. Then we'll also discuss how to cut out those same paper pieces if you don't download it using your templates or how to use these templates to cut out Decoville light pieces, which is what I did actually on this bag right here. This one here, when I made this panel, I actually didn't use any paper pieces at all. Instead, I used pieces of Decoville light and then I just left it. I fused them on and I left it there. So that way when I was done sewing it all together, I didn't have to add any other interfacing. It was already nice and firm. So that's another fun option. After that, we will go over how to cut out your material and sew some of these pieces together. I'm not gonna sew a full, full panel on live with you today, but I will show you how to sew these together. We have done another English paper piecing video where we go in depth on how to sew everything, but I'll give you a little run through again. It's very easy, just takes practice. And then we'll go through taking out all your paper pieces if you're using that, how to open up the seams on the edge so you can get it all prepped, and then how to cut it down 
once you have some fusible fleece attached to it. So if you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comments section. If there's any other English paper piecing videos you'd like to see, let me know. We're coming out with different shapes all the time. I like to keep the shape pretty basic because you can really work with these a lot and create a lot of really intricate designs. I do have a design with these three templates. So if you buy the set, uh, I have a design coming out with these three templates for the spice rack pattern for the back main panel. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. It will be coming soon. All right, guys, let's get started. So when you come to shop oaklers.com, you can go over here to the acrylic templates, scroll on over to English paper piecing, and this is where we have all the different English paper piecing sets. Now, some of these sets are for the Nom Nom sets, which is a different size. You can see these hexagons and triangles are different sizes from the box top set. So just make sure you know which one you're looking for. The Nom Nom set was specifically made for the snack bags and we do have a tutorial going over using those templates. However, I'm interested in the English paper piecing set of three for the box top style. And you'll see some of them are a quarter inch seam allowance and some of them are a three eighths inch seam allowance. Once again, it just depends on what you're making and how comfortable you are. Quarter inch seam allowance is perfect for quilts or large pieces that you're gonna be combining. Uh, 3 8 inch is best for if you're going to be specifically sewing this onto a zipper or a bag that requires a 3 8 inch seam allowance. But once you have one that you like, you can just click on it and click add to cart. While you're here, you might also want to grab the digital file for the paper pieces. Now to get that, you're going to go to patterns and sew for a cause. And once you come over here, you can scroll down until you see the image for the English paper piecing box top style PDF and SVG. Now there is no seam allowance for the paper pieces. You don't need one because the paper pieces don't have a seam, right? This is the inner part. The seam allowance is only based on the acrylic pieces. So once you click on this, all of the proceeds from this do get donated to the charity of the month. So you can just pick which one you want, click add to cart. And then you'll have your items in your cart. So once you purchase the PDF download, you will get an email from Shop Oakler Roots with information about your order. You can just click on the view your order button. And then once you view your order, you will have the option to download now. You'll see that this is a .zip file, which means it's a compressed folder. It has multiple files in it. So you cannot just print off a .zip file. You will need to open it. So what you're gonna do is you can either click the download now or you can click the .zip file, either one, and then download it to your device. Once you have this downloaded to your device, you're gonna see it's again a .zip file. Just double click it. I'm working on a MacBook and it just automatically unzips it for me whenever I double click it. So you see now I have two files here. I have the .zip file, which is the compressed file. And then I have just the Oak Roots boxy bag file. Once you open that, you will have the SVG files. There are three of them, one for the triangle, one for the hexagon, and one for the diamond. So if you have a silhouette cutting machine or if you have a Cricut cutting machine, anything that can cut files using SVG, uh, you can just import those into your device and then have it cut out whatever you need for you. If you're gonna be printing it, then you're gonna open the Oak Roots Boxy Bag printable file. And you can see in this printable file, I do give you a couple little layout ideas, specifically if you're just gonna be using this for the top of the two-tone boxy bag, or if you're gonna be using it for the one-tone single big main panel. Um, and then I give you some more layout ideas that are just kind of fun things to do. So this is that kind of complicated one I was showing you just a moment ago, but they're fun. So you don't need to print off the first couple pages if you don't want to, they're just design ideas. But the following three pages are going to be printables for your triangles for your diamonds, and for your hexagons. So I do suggest you print those three pages off. When I print this, I'm gonna to go to my printer and I'm going to click custom scale. Now I'm gonna scale it at 100%. That's a big deal here because these have to be the right shape. So you're gonna scale this at 100%, not fit, not actual size, just 100%. And then, like I said, I'm only gonna print pages three through five because I just want the diamonds and the triangles and the hexagons. And now I'm just gonna print those on cardstock paper. And one thing I did wanna mention is that when I print, I do like to use Adobe Acrobat Reader. This is a free piece of software from Adobe that you can have on your computer and it works on Macs or Windows, uh, any operating system. And it's very, very useful and it will make sure that your templates print at the correct size. And not just my templates, but any bag pattern templates you're printing, they will print at the right size if you use this 
software and if you print it at 100%. So I do highly suggest you grab this if you don't use it already. And it does need to be done on a computer, not on a phone or a tablet or anything like that. You need to print this from a computer. I'll have links for these down below. Okay, so now we're done with the computer stuff. Let's do the fun stuff, the crafty stuff. So this is what it looks like when you print it out. Now, how many of these you're gonna need is totally up to you. So I just honestly try to fit as many of the pattern shapes as I could on these pieces of paper, but it doesn't mean that you have to cut out all of these. So think about your design first. Like I said, look at some of the designs that I offered already. Count out how many of each of these you'll need. Um, I like to cut out a lot and I just keep them in a little pouch so that I have them if I need them. And before we get started, I do like to take my templates, my acrylic templates, and lay it over. Now on my acrylic templates, you can see I have these dashed lines that connect between the dots. The dashed lines should line up exactly with the black lines on the printout. So remember, this is the inside. It should be exactly the same. So go ahead and just check all three of these just to make sure they printed correctly. And then once you have them all checked, you can start cutting everything out. Now when I cut out these pattern pieces, I just cut right on the line. And I tried to make sure when I designed these, the lines were not too thick. So if you just cut right on the line, you should have a pretty perfect size. You don't have to cut to the left of it. You don't have to cut to the right of it. You also don't have to be that precise. As you can see, I'm just kind of quickly going through this. It's okay if the cutting is not perfectly straight, if it's a little bit wobbly every now and then, that's okay. So just go ahead and cut out the pieces you need for your design. Now let's say that you did not download the PDF file and you want to use your cardstock pieces and cut them out yourself using the dots, or you're gonna be using some sort of other material, like a fusible fleece, a Decovo light, Decovo heavy. You're gonna be using something else. You're not gonna be using paper. That's what these little dots are on these templates. So all three of the templates have these little dots that are at the corners. And all you have to do is lay your template on whatever material you're using, and then just push a dot right in the center of all those holes. So it's pretty easy to just go around. Again, don't worry too much about being totally precise. I try to make sure these holes are big enough so no matter what marking tool you're using, you should be fine. I don't know if a Sharpie will fit, but once you do that, you lift it up and you see you have all these dots. And then all you have to do is just take the straight edge of your template, line it up with the two marked dots on the edge, and then just trace right along that edge. And you can just easily trace this out. And these rotating cutting mats are a lifesaver when it comes to things like this. They make it so much easier. You don't have to move all these things around. And there you go. Now you have it already traced out. You can just put this over it, make sure it all lines up, looks good. And then once again, you can just grab your scissors and just cut this out right on the line that you marked. And if you were gonna be making a whole bunch of these and using cardstock paper, I would suggest that you just download it and print it. It just saves time. However, if you're gonna be using, again, a firmer stabilizer that you're gonna be adhering and not taking out later, then this is great for that. So again, you just have to take your pattern piece, lay it on the back of your stabilizer of choice, and then put the dots in the center of those cutout holes. And once again, just trace connecting the dots. And then once you have those connected, just cut them out. Okay, <laughs> look at this mess. Once you have your insides all cut out, now it's time to design your, your templates. So I'm gonna just push those off to the side for now. And it could be paper or deck of a light, whatever you're using. And then you're gonna wanna mess with your template. So if you have an acrylic template or you have a printout, um, anything like that, or you just have a measurement, use the grid lines on your mat or your rulers or something like that. I like to just lay it out and then just kind of start playing with my templates to see how I want this to lay out. Now, if you have acrylic templates from us, oftentimes we do put the seam allowance as dash lines. So that way you know when you're doing the inner part, this top of my hexagon doesn't need to come to the top of the template. It needs to come to the top of that dash line. Now, again, this is where the seam allowance comes into play. If this dash line is at a quarter inch seam allowance, then I can use the quarter inch templates because when I unfold the fabric at the end, it'll come up towards that top edge here. If it's a 3 8 inch, then I need to be using a 3 8 inch template set. Just something to think about, but if you want your design to lay inside the seam, then the paper pieces can come to the edge of the dash lines versus at the edge of the actual template because this top bit here, bottom bit here, that's all gonna get eaten up in the seam allowance. So just have some fun to lay this out. Use all your different shapes. If you're good with a computer, you can definitely just use the SVG files to design something in your, you know, Cricut Maker or your Silhouette. I forgot what those things are called. But you see, 
it's just it's just fun to create a fun little design. You just kind of go all over the place. Once I have a layout that I like and that fills the template, I like to take a picture of it with my phone so that I have it on me at all times because I will forget the layout once I start sewing it all together. Okay, so now you have your paper pieces cut out or your stabilizer, you have your layout figured out, and now it's time to cut your fabric. Now the fun part about using these acrylic templates is that you have really great pattern placement. Uh, you can have a lot of fun with what shows up where. So for example, let's just say you have a filler color like this where it's just a design, no specific you know, big prints or anything on it. All you have to do then is just go along the edge over here, take your acrylic template wherever you want it, hold it down. My friend Kayla over at Carolina Little Stitches, she actually provided this perfect tip which was add a piece of double-sided tape to the back of this and then stick it down and it provides just enough stickiness to hold this in place so you don't have to worry about it moving around. Another option that's really fun to use is this non-slip coat. Uh, it's Odif Grippy. You can just spray this on the back of your template and then it provides like a little silicone grittiness to it. It does make it a little hazy, but it does help it so that it sticks. So you have a lot of options here because these can be a little slippery. So I just hold it down and then I'm going to just trace out my design just like that. And then I'll grab my fabric scissors and just cut this out. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you wanna cut outside of the line, that's totally fine. If you wanna cut on the line, that's also fine. I'd be, I wouldn't cut inside the line, but it doesn't have to be a perfect cut. You can see here, I did cut outside the line. It's a little sloppy, that's, that's perfectly fine. Now you can see for the triangle and the hexagon, I'm using the quarter inch seam allowance template, but for the diamond, I have a 3 8 inch seam allowance template, and I'll just show you how different that looks as we get to it. So now for the quarter inch one, I think I'm gonna use that with these little butterflies here. And I want to make sure a butterfly ends up just right. So let's see, or these are not butterflies, these are moths. Even better. So let's see, yeah. and this is where those dash lines come in handy because remember, anything inside the dash lines is gonna be seen. Anything outside the dash lines, no matter if it's a quarter inch or three eighths inch seam allowance, will not be seen. So when you're picking your pattern placement, think about that. I think I'm gonna have these two little moths together. Oh, I like them, they're like best friends. They'll go together. So I'm just going to trace around this. And you can see how quick this is. And it's just fun. When you fussy cut, that does tend to mean that you end up cutting pieces out of the center of your fabric, which I know a lot of people don't like to do. So you don't have to fussy cut, but if you want to, you know, if you have scraps and stuff, it's a fun way to eat up some scraps. So I'm just gonna cut this out. And there we go, now I have my hexagon ready to go. I'm gonna set that to the side. And finally, I'm gonna do my diamond. Once again, even though these are small pieces, if you have a small print, you can still have a lot of fun with your pattern placement here. So I'm gonna grab my diamond cut. And how do I want this to go? I think I want one of these little pretty blotches of flowers down here. I'm just gonna trace it out and cut it out. Okay, so now I have my three pieces and I'm actually going to use the Decovo light piece on this green piece just to show you how that works. Now, when we're adhering this, you can still kind of make a mistake. If you're very, very precise with your pattern placement, if you don't center this exactly, you can have a problem. So that's again where these little holes come in handy. So let's look at the back of the diamond here. I'm just gonna place my diamond template right over that piece of material. And then I'm gonna grab my marking tool of choice and I'm going to just mark right in those dots, just like that. And now what those dots tell me is that when I can take my deck of a light piece, I am gonna fuse this on with an iron. I'm gonna make sure that the points of my four corners on my diamond match up with those dots and then I'll fuse it like that. And that's gonna ensure that the front ends up exactly the way I want it to end up. And I can do the same on my other pieces here. Now the other two pieces I will be gluing on with the paper pattern. But once again, on the back side, so on the wrong side of your material, not the right side, I'm just gonna mark right in those dots. And this is just so I know how to line everything up just right. So I'm gonna do this for my triangle as well. Now, if you have a spice rack, this is a perfect tool to hold all your English paper piecing supplies. Uh, this is what I use, and this is because I'm always on the go when I'm doing this. But I will show you my glue of choice is going to be the Soline glue pen. We do sell these in the shop. They do come with a little glue refill as well. This is my favorite glue to use. You could use the Elmer's glue, that's fine too, but the 
this is just very, very easy to use. It's more of like a fine point glue stick and it helps a lot. So first way of gluing this is I like to just glue a little circle on the back of it and then I'm going to take that paper piece that I put the glue on and I'm gonna lay it over the wrong side of my fabric and I'm going to make sure I line up my corners with those little dots that I just marked. And again, that's going to make sure that it ends up exactly how I want. Now, if I'm trying to quickly get a bunch of these done and then I'm gonna do the rest like on a trip or in the car or something like that, I will go through all my fabric pieces and I'll just glue it in the center and then put it to the side and then I'll glue the edges when I'm in the car. So I'm gonna do the same thing on my triangle. I'm just gonna do a little dop of glue on the back of my paper piece and then lay it on the wrong side of my fabric, lining up the corners with those dots. And there we go, I'll just add that to my stack. Now you can see for the Decoville Light piece here, I didn't glue it on, I fused it on because if I'm gonna be using Decoville Light, fusible fleece, Decoville Heavy, anything like that, I'm using that because I'm not removing that later. The paper pieces I will be removing, and these are actually all paper pieces that I've used a couple times already. So the paper pieces are great. They take a while to cut out, but you can reuse them over and over again. Um, the Decoville Light, I'm, you won't. So it is completely fused on. But either way, if you're using the paper pieces or the Decoville Light, you do want to glue down the sides. And you wanna use it with a very lightweight glue, like this specific one or an Elmer's glue. Nothing permanent. And when I glue this down, I like to just add a little line of glue right along the edge of my paper piece or my interfacing. And then I extend it off to the edges a little bit as well. And then just gently, fold the fabric around. Now I'm not like tugging it down and pulling it as hard as I can. Remember, this is quilt cotton, it can stretch and we don't want it super tight, it's gonna make it hard to sew. So I just go one edge at a time again, I go over the folded bit I already did, over my innards and then off the edge just a bit and then wrap it around nice and gently. Give it a good press and continue doing this all the way around. And there we go, there's my diamond piece all ready to go. Now, it's totally secure. I'm gonna continue doing that for my other pieces as well. So for my hexagon here, again, I go along the edge of the paper and I go off the end just a little bit on the fabric and then just gently fold it down. Nice and light fingers. You don't, we're, we're not trying to hurt anybody here. We're not trying to wrap it super tight. It's actually better if it's not super tight. It makes it easier to sew. All right, so there's my hexagon with my little buddies, my little moth buddies. And finally, I'm going to do the triangle. And there we go. Now we have three of the units. And you'll just continue this for all of your units. And once you have them all done, then I suggest you once again, lay it all out how you want, get all your pieces together, lay out the entire block, however you want it to be completed, and then take a picture of it with your phone so you have it on you. If you wanna print it, you can. I usually just take a picture of my phone and, and just keep my phone with me. Okay, here are the items I like to use when I'm sewing my English paper piecing pieces together. I like to use these James John's needles and I really love this little egg shaped case because it's easy to keep them in there and I don't have to worry about losing them. I have a small pair of scissors. I have a small th spool of thread. This is an Aurifil thread, weight 50. I'm totally fine using cotton thread with English paper piecing. Um, but whenever it sews into the bag, like if you're making a bag bag and you sew this panel in, then I do think you should definitely be using a polyester thread. But for this piece right here, it's nice to use a lightweight cotton thread. And then I have some little thimbles. Now this is just a little sticky bit here and I just put it on my middle finger cause that's the finger I use to push the needle in. Um, and you can you reuse this. Every time I'm done, I just take it off, put it back on the piece of paper and I'll use it until it can't stick anymore. It actually lasts a really long time. And then I also have a couple of clover clips just to hold things together. So the first thing you wanna do is figure out which pieces you're going to be sewing together first. It's nice to have a game plan. So for example, if you were going to be sewing it like this, right? Maybe these two pieces like that, you should kind of have an idea because what you can do is you can start at this top edge here, sew this triangle on and then continue down and sew the diamond on. Uh, you will find that you're kind of mushing it around a lot as your panel gets bigger. And I'll show you kind of what we do for that, but just always kind of think about it. But also don't get too caught up on using all your thread. If you have to cut your thread and start somewhere else, that's totally fine. But let's start like this. I'm gonna start with this yellow triangle on the top of my little hexagon here. So we're gonna line up the edges that we're concerned with and then we're gonna flip them right sides together. 
And I always like to put a clip on the edge that I'm going to be sewing because as I do this and then I move over to my needle, I will forget, where am I sewing? I forgot. So as long as I have a clip on the edge I'm gonna be sewing, I know that it's there. Now I'm gonna grab my needle and my thread. Now, big piece of advice is don't cut your thread too long. The longer your thread is, it's, it's not gonna be easier. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna get so much more sewing done if I have a long piece of thread. It tangles up. It's such a lightweight thread that it does tangle up. I do about 18 inches. And then I'm gonna just thread it through my needle. And if you need a needle threader, go ahead and use that. But I find these needles are pretty easy to thread. And then we're gonna take both ends of our thread and pull them to meet one another. And then once they're meeting one another, I have my tails of my thread between my left pointer finger and thumb. And then I have my needle here, the needle part pointing towards my other hand. And I'm just gonna hold those edges down about my needle and wrap around the tip of my needle about four or five times, holding it all down in place with my other finger. And so I still have that wrapping underneath my right pointer finger. And then I'm gonna use my right pointer finger and thumb to slide down that wrapping, down all the way towards the end of the thread, and it creates a little knot. It's just an easy way to create a very tiny knot. All right, so once again, I'm gonna remember where I wanna start. And with my two pieces, right sides together, I'm gonna to start right on the corner and I'm just gonna push the needle. I like to push the needle towards me. That's just my personal preference. And you see, I always use my middle finger. So I'm just gonna push the needle towards me, pull it all the way out like that. And then I'm gonna wrap it around. I like to grab the thread with my other hand here so it doesn't get tangled. It, it will get tangled. Even if you do it all the time, at some point these get tangled and you get knots and you have to <laughs> clean it up, but it's fine. And then I'm gonna once again go from the back towards me, towards the front, leaving just a, just a bit, maybe a couple millimeters between each thread, you'll get into a rhythm. When you first start this, some of them will be really close together, some of them will be really far, far apart. And as I'm pushing this needle through, I'm not pushing it through paper. So I'm kind of like, I can feel it. I can feel my needle scraping against the top edge of the paper, but I'm not going through the paper. And you'll be able to tell if, if you try to go through the paper, it's a lot of resistance. Um, if you have to go through the paper, that's fine. You can rip it out later. That's why we say we didn't want this to be too tight when we were gluing it down, because the tighter the fabric is along that edge of paper, the harder it is to get that needle to only go through the material and not go through the paper. So I'm always going from the back one towards the front piece, and I'm going through both pieces of fabric just right on the edge. And this is honestly just something that takes practice. It doesn't take long to get the hang of it though. It doesn't take a lot of practice. Okay, whenever you're starting or stopping or you're coming to a corner or a connecting edge, so like this right here is a connecting bit right here uh, because I will be connecting another piece of my pattern piece over here. Whenever you come to one of those, you wanna, you wanna tighten it up and secure it. So wherever you stop, you're stopped right on the corner. I'm gonna go back to the corner in the same spot and I'm gonna once again push the needle from the back piece towards me, towards the front. And as I pull it through, I'm not gonna pull it all the way through because I'm gonna leave this loop in the thread and then I'm gonna take my needle and put it through that loop in the thread and then pull it through and it's like a little knot. You don't have to do a whole bunch of them, just one is fine. So now we have a nice little tucked in knot there. So my thread is down here at this corner piece. I'm gonna grab my diamond now. I think I'm actually gonna put my diamond like this, but I have to decide, do I want to sew from this connection piece up or do I wanna sew down? Totally up to you, I'm gonna sew down so I'm going to flip this right sides together with my hexagon and add my clip along the edge I'm gonna be sewing. And then I'm gonna flip it back again. And now at that connector point with the new piece of material in my hexagon, I'm gonna pull the thread through once. And then in around the same spot, I'm gonna pull it through again. And then I'm going to insert the needle through the loop and give it a nice little knot. Just, just to secure it, nothing fancy. And then I'm gonna continue sewing along this edge just like I did with the triangle and with the hexagon and the previous step. And once you have enough of it sewn, you can remove your clip. And then once again, once we get to a corner piece, we're gonna push it through once, and then we're gonna push it through twice and put our needle through the loop. And there we go. And then whenever you come to this edge over here, all you have to do is fold these two together. Now remember, you can fold all this, paper folds. So, so you don't have to worry about this staying flat. You don't have to be like, well, how do I fold these together to keep this flat? Don't keep it flat, fold it. So you just fold it in half like that, put your clip down, 
and then you're just going to sew along this edge and continue on to build your entire panel. So once you get to a large panel, like something like this, and you're working on little bits, you have to be really good about moving stuff around. One tip if you're really struggling with your cardstock paper getting in the way, any piece of cardstock paper where all of the edges are already sewn, you can remove. For example, this one, any of these, 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 any of these ones in the middle here where every single edge is already sewn, I have no more edges to sew to it. You can just remove those pieces of paper and then continue adding the English paper piecing pieces on the exterior parts. So it can be a little hard to think about. As long as you don't have to sew anything else to it, you can remove the paper and it makes it easier to work with the material. All right, so if you're using the paper pieces, now you're gonna wanna remove them once you're complete with your panel. Uh, if you're using the Decoville light or the any sort of other fusible fleece stabilizer, you're not gonna remove those pieces, but you do want to make sure on the edges over here, you lift up the seam. So for example, if this piece of paper right here was Decoville light, I would leave the paper, but I'm going to pull up the raw edge of the material. That's important because this is a seam we're gonna to use to sew into something else. So the edges of everything needs to be raw. This is easy to do if you're removing the paper, but if you're leaving your deck of the light or your stabilizer, you need to remember that. All right, once you have all the paper pieces removed or you just have all of the edges pulled out, you wanna give this a good press. Now take your time to really get all of the edges nice and flat. Honestly, I find this is like more tedious than even sewing it together. Cause you really wanna get these edges flat. And sometimes they don't want to be flat. And you may find that using a small iron here, like one of those little mini Cricut irons is easier. All right, and the goal here is just to get everything as flat as possible. So take your time here. Once again, check all your edges. So then once you have this nice and flat, uh, if you don't have any stabilizer in it, so if you don't have any deck of a light fusible fleece, so you just had the paper and you removed the paper, what we wanna do now is add some woven interfacing because we definitely wanna add some support to this. So I just have a scrap piece of woven interfacing here and I'm gonna do it so that the sticky part of the woven interfacing is facing the back side of my material. So remember my material is wrong side up. And then I'm just gonna grab my iron and fuse this in place. Now I don't cut anything down to size. If you want, you can definitely use your finished template. So if you're using the box top, you could definitely use this template right here to cut out your woven interfacing and then fuse it down. Uh, I, I just fuse it all like this. But you could use the finished cutout size of woven interfacing to fuse to the back of this and then just cut it out after that. And there you go. Now you have your panel done. Now I'm gonna grab my template here and I'm gonna line this up so it is covering everything. I wanna make sure there is fabric coming to all of the edges of my template, okay? There's gonna be more fabric than we need, but I do wanna make sure it's coming to all the edges, the short edges and the long edges. You can use a rotary cutter for this if you'd like. I like to trace it with a pen though, because I have a tendency to make mistakes with rotary cutters. And then once you have that all traced out, you can grab your scissors or rotary cutter, whatever you'd like, and cut it out. Again, if you're just gonna be cutting out a rectangle, then just use your rotary cutter and your ruler for this. Or if you're comfortable using a rotary cutter and the templates, you can use that. All right, and then once I have it cut out, I like to fuse it one more time from the front just to get it nice and clean looking. And if you were using this on a pattern that had more interfacing or more stabilizer, like a Decoville light or a fusible fleece that is cut smaller than this to keep it out of the seams, you can still fuse that onto the back of this. And there we go. There's one of the box tops cut out. Now let's do the cutout for the fun one. Honestly, I just wanna see how this comes together. So we're gonna lay out this design right here. And I'm just gonna move this around to make sure that all of the edges of my template have fabric coming up to them. I'm gonna take a look at my designs, see where everything is, all right. Once again, I am going to trace this. Normally when I use these templates, I only trace the corners and then I use a rotary cutter for the long edges. I guess I can do that. I'll just trace the corners for now. And then I'll use a rotary cutter for the rest. 
Be careful, you don't want anything slipping on you. All right, once that's done, this looks so cool, doesn't it? This one turned out really cool. We're gonna once again just press it from the front just to make sure it's nice and adhered and I'm not gonna have to fight it at any point. And there we go. We have two boxy bag tops ready to go. I will use these on a bag off camera um, and check social media. I'll share the finished result over there. But these look really cool. And you can see these templates create totally different designs. Like I like how this is like a black flower coming off of this potions over here. But then this is a lot more clean with like little geometric shapes, you know. I, I just, this turns out so cool. And then when you sew it into a bag, any bag, any pattern, um, it ends up looking very custom, which I love. All righty. Look how pretty that is. Look how pretty this one is. They're both so pretty. I love this one. Oh my gosh, I love this one so much. I cannot wait to see this on the finished boxy bag. And I love this one too. They're both easy to make. They're both easy to come together. They're so much fun. So if you've been wondering, how do I use these templates? What the heck are those holes for? Um, I hope that this answered that question and I hope that this inspired you to go and try them out. I personally love English paper piecing because the majority of the work, I mean, pretty much all of it is done by hand which means I can easily just take it, plop it in my spice rack. All my tools are right here. I even usually bring my Kindle with me so that way when I'm in a car, I actually use my Kindle as a little table and then I'll just glue things and sew things. It's, it's such a fun, relaxing activity. I have spoken to so many of you guys who have started English paper piecing, who, who have done this for the very first time ever, and you've said the same thing. You're like, this is just relaxing. It's nice to sit on the couch with the family and just hand sew, because we love sewing so much, but a lot of us have our sewing room kind of away from everybody else for a good reason. Uh, but sometimes we wanna sew and be with everybody. So this is kind of like the best of both worlds. You're still creating, you're still sewing, having fun, but you're also still a bag maker. You know, you're creating your panels that you're gonna sew together later and then you create just the most beautiful items. I mean, it really is like English paper piecing just creates the most beautiful items that you will not find anywhere else because it's completely unique to what you chose for every single one of those little pieces. So I hope you have fun with these. If you use these templates to make anything, please let me know if you wanna send me an email with a photo. I am Jessica at oaklyroots.com. If you post it on social media, you can tag me. I'm at oaklyroots everywhere. I mean, everywhere, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, re, uh, whatever the other one's called, I forgot. Threads, there we go, threads. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. Thank you so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope that you are inspired to go make something, have a lot of fun with these patterns. If you're not already subscribed, please make sure you click subscribe down below. Also make sure you hit that little bell, the little notification bell. That's gonna make sure you're notified every single time we have a new video or when we go live. For even more fun content from Oak Roots, make sure you're following us on Facebook and Instagram. We do daily stories over there, which include unboxing, talks about books, other little mini tutorials, lots and lots of discussion over all kinds of things going on. You can also find us on TikTok and also on Reels for even more fun, kind of more random content. And if you really wanna dive in for some behind the scenes content, free gifts, access to shop items before anybody else, and influence on upcoming videos, make sure you go check out Oak Alerts over on Patreon. We have a lot going on over there and it's a fun place to hang out and you are directly supporting the Oak Alerts YouTube channel. These videos could not be possible without the help of my Patreon. So thank you so, so much to everybody over there. Thank you again for watching today's tutorial. I hope you enjoy the videos. Go make something.